This Tuesday, March 19th, NBA Betting Picks edition of the NBA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K-U-T-T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy, pick them for a chance to win 100x in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. And we're also brought to you by SGPN subscriber-only March Madness Bankroll Challenge. It's free to enter up to 2,000 in prizes. Enter today at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. And we're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Welcome, everyone, to the NBA Gambling Podcast, part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. It is Tuesday, March the 19th, currently 11.07 on the East Coast. Here to get into our NBA betting picks for the Tuesday night card. And we'll recap what we saw in the association on Monday night. But joining me here to help me break everything down in the association, you guys know him as the voice of the Tennis Gambling Podcast, NFL, MLB, WNBA, and of course here on the NBA Gambling Podcast, it's Scott Sudi Rochelle. Scott, what's going on, my man? How are you doing this Tuesday morning? I'm doing pretty well. I feel like everyone's kind of pivoted to college basketball for their brackets at least. But we still got the NBA. Uh, not exactly the best slate, so I'm not going to pretend that it is, but you know, you still get to watch professionals, still get to watch some good basketball, or at least hopefully good basketball. But yeah, I think most people have already pivoted to college. Have you? Uh, not quite yet. Uh, probably we'll get there maybe probably today or tomorrow. Um, well, yeah, I know we have what the first four in playing tonight. Um, and then what the tournament kicks off on Wednesday, is it or is it Thursday? I think. Um, so you have uh playing games today and tomorrow, and then okay. you have the bracket starting on Thursday. Thursday, okay. So officially, the bracket starts. Well, I guess you could say it starts today as well, but um, at least the teams that we know the 64 teams that will be set on Thursday. So definitely looking forward to it. Uh, but like you mentioned, yeah, a lot of NBA still left to be played here and a lot to be determined here. And again, like you mentioned, only five games on the schedule here tonight. So pretty light card compared to what we used to have, uh, which is around seven to nine, uh, eight, uh, seven, eight, nine games per night. But hey, we still have hoops uh, to watch here tonight uh, in the association. Yesterday, um, I guess it was an okay day uh, as far as our picks went. Um, I locked up the Lakers team total over 116 and a half. That number closed around 118. Um, got there relatively easily. Uh, did the Lakers team total over. They ended up scoring 136 last night uh, against the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, they finished the game 136-105 uh, in that game. Also did take the heat on Nault line. Um, and this one uh, could have gone either way, but I think I'd give the Sixers a lot of credit for what they were able to do in that third quarter uh, where they outscored the Heat. I think they started that third quarter 17-2 to two run because I was watching this game, and then he made it a game in the fourth quarter but just weren't able to get over the hump. Um, Kelly Oubre, Kyle Lowry, the defense, Tyrese Maxey got it done. Uh, they get the huge victory last night over the Miami Heat, 98-91. Uh, Jimmy Butler did not play in that game last night. I don't know. I think... Um, Terrell had locked up heat on the uh, on the spread at least, and then he also had the Jazz uh, on the money line last night. Jazz looked really good in the first quarter, uh, but then the Minnesota Timberwolves just turned it on in the second half, where they outscored the Utah Jazz sixty-one to 
to 45, uh, led by, I know we'll talk about some of the highlight dunks we saw last night uh, from Anthony Edwards to Jalen Johnson. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think those are pretty good slate last night. I don't know we had one blowout, but everything else, or two blowouts, I think it was relatively close last night. So at least we're seeing some competitive basketball here, Scott. What are your takeaways from last night? Uh, yeah, so just looking at some of the games here, uh, I feel like we've got to start off with Halliburton, uh, at least talking about how recently his three-point shot has completely fallen off a cliff. Mm-hmm. Went one of nine from three again last night. I'm not saying that Halliburton has been solved or whatever you want to say, but I'm at least going to acknowledge he's been really bad lately. So we'll see if he can get back on track. But we know Indiana relies heavily on him because the ball's always in his hands. Recently, the shot has not been there for him, and that's a problem. So I'm going to start off in that game, kind of going across in chronological order. So looking at the next game, uh, you had the Heat losing, but they were on a back-to-back, right? And they were shorthanded, so not yeah, a total yeah. shock there. Uh, the Bulls beat the Trailblazers, not a shock. Aiton was good once again. His stat lines mm-hmm. were good. Apparently, the secret was making a bunch of money and deciding not to sleep on air mattresses. <laughs> so that was apparently, you know, the big storyline uh, for DeAndre Ayton yesterday. I don't know what the hell he's talking about half the time. I, I, he's not going to the <laughs> arena because there's ice in the driveway and he's making all that money and he's sleeping on air mattresses. I don't know what DeAndre Ayton's doing. He's in his own world right now, but he's been good for the last two weeks. So we'll see if that continues. Uh, the Ants play I'll mention in a second. Uh, you know, the Kings barely beating the Grizzlies at overtime at home. That was almost a really bad loss, but they got the job done as they won by 10. Uh, the Knicks had a nice road win. The Warriors, not a very good team. Josh Hart, shout out to him, never left the floor, and he had a triple-double. So him and McBride, I think, played every minute last night. And Josh That's Hart, wild. my favorite role player in the league, ended up having another triple-double, which I think was 25-1 to last night. And you had another crazy dunk with Jalen Johnson, Didn't really matter, though. The Lakers won by 30, so doesn't really matter too much. But, yeah, we got to mention the ant dunk because that's the dunk of the year. Uh, Best dunk that we've seen probably in a couple of years. And (laughs) it's one of the only dunks I've seen both players involved in get injured. Because Edwards messed up his finger, which you could tell from the teammate reaction. He ended up coming back into the game with a dislocated finger, and he looked fine down the stretch. Collins got hit in the face. I think he had a concussion. So both guys involved in the dunk got injured, which I don't remember really ever seeing. That dunk was filthy. That's all I'm going to say yeah. on it. Yeah, I think there was the dunk attempt he had against the Pacers. Um, and I forgot who it was he was trying to posterize. But Jesus Christ, last night, that dunk, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, like you mentioned, that's the best dunk we've seen in – a very long time and if you kind of just go back and look at some of the pictures like where he actually like gets to like Mm -hmm. the height of it it's like this what this like it looked like like there was no way that this was gonna like go down and then it was just absolutely incredible to see like at that point like john collins kind of knew that he was he was toast at that point but uh i think some of the post game call or so uh post game interview um comments from anthony edwards are always hilarious uh at first i think he said that he couldn't really celebrate because he had like you mentioned he had dislocated the finger came back in to nobody's surprise then i think there was he was signing some autographs after the post game interview was done to some of the fans and the one of the fans asked him for his jersey and he replies no nah, i can't give you this one this one's going to john collins <laughs> i thought that was absolutely hilarious and a great troll job by anthony edwards but i mean i think he's slowly scott becoming one of the more fun players just to watch in the NBA because he's one of the few guys in the association that puts in a hundred percent effort on both sides of, of, of the ball, right? Offensively, we know what he can do. And then defensively, I mean, some of the incredible blocks blocks that we've seen uh, and his effort on defense is just, it's, it's refreshing to watch because there's not a lot of players in the association today that play as hard as Anthony Edwards is on both sides. And against he has all the flashy dunks as well. So um, yeah, that was a, a, it was real nice. Welcome to your Kodak moment, John Collins. And I'm pretty sure that uh, picture is going to be hanging up in uh, Anthony Edwards' house somewhere along the way. Yeah, uh, I feel like even though I know that Edwards has been on an insane run for the last couple of weeks, Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he can sustain it for an entire season, but I am going to say in the long term, once again, not the short term, because they were in line for maybe a one seed. 
the cat injury might actually have a lot of positive impact on Anthony Edwards uh, moving yeah. forward, especially yeah. for a confidence perspective. Not that Ant really needed a confidence boost. He's one of the most confident players in the league, but he has definitely found a certain gear that he was not showcasing with Cat in the lineup. I'm not saying they're going to move on from Cat after the season, but what I am trying to say is it does seem like in a pretty dark moment for the team, Ant has found a way to take his game to another level when the team needed him to, and I at least want to bring that up because ever since Cat got injured, Ant's stats have completely just exploded, and I had to at least mention that. So... Props to Ann for another great dunk and for leading his team on the comeback. I also realized that I uh, forgot to mention a game before in the recap. One of my other favorite role players in the league. Great mm -hmm. night for me. Derek White had a triple-double, too. So yeah. two of my favorite role players at triple-doubles. It was a very good night for me. Yeah. Um, I, I know it feels like that Nikola Jokic just pretty much wrapped up um, the MVP. And I know Anthony Edwards is a very, very long shot right now to win MVP, but I, again, I think that maybe not this year, maybe next year, that if for what the Minnesota Timberwolves have seen with Anthony Edwards without Carl Anthony Towns, that there may be conversations that maybe they move on from Carl Anthony Towns and then add some significant pieces or another ball handle or another guy that can create his own shot next to a guy like Anthony Edwards. But again, that will be a conversation for for the off season, but yeah, I mean, another great night for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I know they have a big game tonight. We'll get to later uh, in the episode uh, to talk about against the Denver Nuggets. Um, and because of Anthony Edwards dunk, there was another dunk last night by Jalen Johnson on the very first basket of the game where he nearly pulled a, a Vince Carter esque dunk um, from the Olympics. Um, I mean, decades ago where he dunked over um, Austin, Austin Reeves uh, yesterday. I did Jalen Johnson. So that could have, Possibly we could have had two dunks of the night uh, last night, or sorry, dunks of the year uh, in one night last night between Anthony Edwards and Jalen Johnson. Not sure if you caught Jalen Johnson's uh, dunk uh, as well um, in that Lakers game, but uh, those two at least for sure are one and two at least for this season. I don't, I don't think I remember seeing another one this season between those two that we saw last night. No, I think that those were very solid dunks. Obviously, the Ant one's better just based on the sheer force that he generated with the dunk. It's kind of fitting for Atlanta that you get a great highlight and then you immediately lose by 31 points. That kind of sums up Atlanta's <laughs> entire season. But yeah. still, yeah, a couple of great highlights in the association last night, and it just tells you how much talent there's actually in the league and how much athleticism we have. I'm trying to think of any other points I want to make. The last thing I'll mention with Minnesota quickly, because I don't want to completely just talk about them over and over again. Mm -hmm. With Nas Reed getting a bigger role and with Cat being out, have you really noticed the difference with that team? Um, I think that they are definitely playing. Um, it feels kind of the same. <sighs> yeah, I think it does. But it, I think the conversation then becomes, do we think that Nas Reed can fill the role of Carl Anthony Towns if they do decide to move on from Cat in the offseason. My point like, is that it's a lot of money. Like, Cat's contract yeah. is massive. You can still move it because he's young. But what mm -hmm. I am trying to say is if you think Nas Reed can do a serviceable a serviceable job of replacing um, Cat in the starting lineup, wouldn't you be better allocating your resources to maybe a point guard, for example? It just feels like, besides Ant... I've never been a Connolly guy. I was actually back in Memphis, but recently I just think he's past his prime. I know he had 20 plus points a couple nights ago. It just feels like the guard play for Minnesota besides Ant is a bit underwhelming. And mm -hmm. I think that their front court is fine with either Go Bear and Cat or Go Bear and Reed. It just feels like they need another wing scorer or even yeah. just an overall. A playmaker from a point guard perspective and I feel like they're better off at least to make a leap for a potential title run they really should spend some money on some guard play and I do think that's one thing I gotta at least mention or maybe a small forward but they need some help with regards to scoring mm -hmm. depth in that area and it just feels like Cat is kind of a surplus now I'm not gonna fully roast Cat uh, because I feel like I've done it and I feel like a lot of people know that I'm not the biggest Cat guy He's the only player that I can remember that got benched in the middle of a 60-piece. 
I don't remember that happening to anybody else in the history of the sport. But yeah. still, I think we would agree with this current roster makeup. Mike Conley and company probably not going to cut it. You probably need to improve in those areas. You agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Again, again, Mike Conley is getting up there in age. I know they gave him a contract extension for another two years, but it was cheap. It was a good deal. Yeah, still. it was a good deal for them. Maybe again, if they do decide to move on from Cat in the offseason, they add another, you know, like you mentioned, a playmaker or a guy that can create his own shot. Uh, next, Anthony Edwards. I think that you know, want to allocate that money to a guy like that to build around Anthony Edwards, and then you have Rudy Gobert that can be obviously be your defensive anchor. Uh, in the front court and Jalen McDaniels. Um, I mean, you know, they have some pieces, right? Like you mentioned, Nasri, the McDaniels of the world, even Jordan McLaughlin coming off of the bench. I mean, he's been uh, in some games a spark for them coming off of the bench. So there's definitely um, uh, signs or areas of improvement, I should say, for this uh, Minnesota Timberwolves team to be a legitimate championship contender. But again, look, they're having a fantastic season. They can still end up as the number one seed uh, in the Western Conference. And I think that alone is a great accomplishment for this team. Now, how does that translate for them? And we'll see the flaws of some of these teams when we get to meaningful basketball in the playoffs where they can really find out, okay, what do we need to do to address some of the areas that we need improvement in so we can be a legitimate championship contender going forward, building around some of the young pieces like we have, like in Anthony Edwards for this Minnesota Timberwolves team. So, yeah, it'll be uh, interesting to see for this Minnesota Timberwolves team. Anything else uh, I want to mention from last time before we get into the games for tonight? No, I think I basically covered everything. I didn't want to only talk about Minnesota, but I have to at least point out with Ant's uh, surge recently and with the team still winning games, I had to bring up if you've noticed a noticeable drop-off uh, with Cat being out of the lineup. I have not. Yeah, I haven't really either. And just like you mentioned, that we see now the um, Anthony Edwards, I guess, to get another step forward as far as us knowing, I mean, we already knew, but maybe for the casual basketball fan, that knowing that Anthony Edwards can carry the offensive load, that at some point he will need to get some help because it, playing at this level day in and day out for every single game is not really sustainable. And again, he's he's been very durable for his short career in the NBA uh, because we've seen him leave games multiple times, whether it's been dislocated fingers, ankle injuries, whatever the case might be, and return. But I think at some point it may catch up to Anthony Edwards maybe not now, maybe not in a couple of years, but eventually I think they're going to have to build around a guy like Anthony Edwards. Uh, all right, Scott, before we get into the games here for the Tuesday night schedule, uh, let me remind everybody about our merch store and merch madness. Look, 15% off of everything in the merch store. Make sure you use our promo code madness. Uh, we've got new lids for the NBA gambling podcast in there. Go ahead and check those out. They look really, really nice. And obviously, of course, First half unders t-shirts, uh, college basketball uh, experience t-shirts. We're in the midst of March Madness here. So, again, show your support to not only the college experience, not only the NBA Gambling Podcast, but, hey, MLB right around the corner. I know the Soul Series uh, kicks off tomorrow morning and about eight, nine days away from opening day in MLB. So now would be a great time to get over to the merch store and get some of the uh, swagger and uh, swag there from the merch store. Again, make sure you use that promo code MADNESS. Up until the tip of the tournament using promo code madness, 15% off of everything in the merch store. And we're also brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Peer to peer social betting is a new and better way to bet, bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes, plus ton of. Tons of fun social features that gives it a feel of a betting social network. Cut offers lower VIG and fully customizable odds. Create your own bets. Cut handles the payment side of things, so you never have to chase anyone down for money. Social features include group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head -head history, user profiles, fan groups, and much more. You can get cash back every single time you bet against your friends or other users. Download Cut today in the App Store or at Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T. -T, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And we're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Play their pick game. You can pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's games for a chance to win big. And you can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Pick between two and five players. To build a pick'em entry, you can also make rival picks, which picks two players against each other. 
Um, stay tuned at the end of the episode. Scott and I will put together our Undock Fantasy entry here tonight for the Tuesday schedule, uh, and you can come cash in with us. And if you haven't already signed up with an account, make sure you use that promo code NBA SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to one hundred dollars. Again, that's using our promo code NBA SGPN. Get your first deposit doubled up to one hundred dollars, as well as an instant pick'em special. Must be eighteen years or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call one eight hundred five two two forty seven hundred or visit www.ncpgambling.org. All right, Scott, let's get into the games here for tonight. The first game on the schedule, we have the Houston Rockets. They are in Washington, D.C. here tonight to take on the uh, Washington Wizards. Currently, as it stands, the Rockets are a nine and a half point road favorite here with a total of 228 in this game. Looking at the injury report for both of these teams, start here with the Houston Rockets. Uh, the usual suspects are out, guys that are pretty much missing for the rest of the season. Tari Eason, Alpernin, Shangun, and Cam Whitmore is going to be out for a few more weeks. For the Washington Wizards, no Denny Avdia, no Marvin Bagley, no Bilal Koulibaly, no Tyus Jones, uh, no Landry Shamit, and Kyle Kuzma is officially listed as questionable in this game with shoulder soreness. Uh, these two teams just matched up, I believe, in Houston. Um, where the Rockets were a seven and a half point favorite and absolutely blew uh, the Washington Wizards out of the water. We can pretty much say that they are in full tank mode, are the Washington Wizards with all the guys that they do have sitting. But the Rockets did get the victory back on Thursday, March the 14th, 135-119. Um, has anything changed in this game here for you, Scott, or do you still expect or do you expect the Rockets to continue rolling here? Well, we know this team's not very good on the road, but recently they've been better on the road. But the Wizards, you'll get their overall roster, assuming that Kuzma's going to be out based on the questionable tag and the fact that why would the Wizards use him if he's questionable when the team just actively sucks? I, I, I It looks like a G League team. I mean, I mean it's just yeah. a bad basketball team. So I'm going to go with Houston because this team's won five straight. They're trying to make a push for a playing spot. We'll see what happens. Uh, but either way, point is they're playing good basketball, even without Shengun. Defensively, in particular, they've been solid. I got a link to Houston. The Wizards are a laughing stock. They're probably going to have the worst record in the league. I did notice that one book had their updated win total at 14 and a half. Mm -hmm. I believe they're at 11 now. They're not winning four more games. Yeah. Like that that's not happening. So I I like the under 14 and a half. I forgot how exactly how many games they have left. They have sorry, just pulling it up right now. They have 14 uh, so, games left. Yeah. There is no way in hell this team's winning four more games. <laughs> like th th that is not happening. So yes, I like the under for the Wizards live win total. I think they finish with maybe 12. If they lost out, would you be shocked? I wouldn't. This team's awful. So No. I think their only winnable games are. I mean, they have a game against Detroit. They have two against the Raptors. Maybe the Bulls, but I mean, everybody else, it's like the. It's and that's the Celtics. assuming they win all those games. Like, if they yeah. lose one of those games, they got problems anyway. They might lose multiple of those games because the Wizards don't have anybody at this point. Avdi is injured. Kuzma's questionable. They got Jordan Poole. Good luck with that. You get mm -hmm. my point. Like, this yeah. team is not in good form. They're injured or tanking. I don't even know if they're tanking anymore because they're guaranteed to be a top three pick. So I don't even know. I don't even think they're tanking. I just think they're this bad. Yeah. But I got to go with Houston. They're in good form. They are still competing for something. And we just saw this matchup, and they were able to win by double digits. I'm going to take Houston. And that was a game where Denny Avdia played in. That was a game where Tyus Jones played in. He was that great was a game. in that game, by the way. Avdia yeah. was like 10 of 13 in that game. Yeah, four. Uh, so yeah, four or five on the free throw line, nine rebounds, five assists, and that was a game where Bilal Koulibaly also played in that game. So now, for sure, you don't have three of those guys. And Kyle Kuzma had twenty three points in that game, who is also questionable here tonight. So you might have a completely different st looking starting lineup. You know, adding Jordan Poole into that starting lineup. I mean, God, I mean, you would have to go way down uh, to the end of the bench to get starters at least into this game. So I mean, like you mentioned, the Rockets. 
they're three games out of that 10th spot. Can they get into the playing tournament? Sure. We'll see who could possibly fall out, but they're still playing hard. And I think Coach Ime Yudoka expects this team to play, uh, continue playing hard. So I, I can't look at the Wizards in any form or fashion here. Rockets are playing well right now. Uh, give me the Rockets here, minus the nine and a half. Uh, total sitting at 227 and a half here. Uh, Casey does have a trend for this one. It says since 2007. The teams are favored by uh, less than nine and a half points, and the over under is between 220 and 223. And the opponent lost their previous game. They are 125, 60, and six towards the over. Rockets was Wizards over 227 and a half. So um, there's a trend for this game here. But do you have any thoughts on the total here? 228 here, Scott? I'm assuming that trend is less than or equal to because the spread yeah, yeah, yeah. is literally nine and a half. So I'm assuming yeah. it's less than or equal to. But either way, I'm going to lean over. I tried taking under in this last matchup, and the game flew over by about 40 points. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to try to learn from whatever happened that time out. I think I prefer Houston team total over. Yeah. I mean, the Wizards, I don't know how they're going to score. They don't have any talent left, especially if Kuzma is going to be out. So they're going to have to try to manufacture points. I don't want to bother. Give me Houston team total over instead. Yeah, I mean, look, over the last four games that they have lost, they gave up they gave 109 to the Grizzlies, which is a little bit telling. Uh, they have a 135, like you mentioned, to the Rockets, 127 to the Bulls, and they gave up 130 piece to the Celtics in a game where they didn't have Jalen Brown, they didn't have Porzingis, uh, they didn't have Derek White, and now the Rockets are only missing Shangoon here. I think it'll be something similar to what we saw when these two teams matched up last Thursday. Um, player props will be a little bit tough, at least for the wizard side, because we don't know who's actually playing unless you want to look at Jordan Poole or something. But anything you like for the rocket side as far as player props? Oh, yeah. Can I get the Jordan Poole shot attempts? I'll take the over on that one uh, if you can find a market on that. But yeah, I actually found an obscure prop that I like. I like Jock Landell under uh, in this game at six okay. and a half rebounds. I know that he's the backup center, and I do know that Washington is not a good rebounding team. Like, they're one of the worst rebounding teams in the league. Having Mm -hmm. said that, Lendell really doesn't get much burn, even with Shingun being out. He's a backup center. They're going to be using Jabari Smith, and they're going to be going small, and he's probably going to play 23 minutes, give or take. He played more minutes in the last meeting. He played about 26-27, and he only had five rebounds in that game. So even with a boosted amount of playing time, he still went under. Jock Landell, though, in the three games without Shengun in the lineup due to the recent injury, has never had six rebounds and is lined to six and a half. So it feels like this is a bit too inflated based on Washington's bad rebounding numbers. Mm-hmm. But in the game that they just played, where Shengun did not play, he only had five. So I think this rebounding number is too high. It's a backup center. So if Houston once again does struggle on the road and Washington hangs in there, He's not playing that much in the fourth quarter. So based on that, I'll go with Lindell under six and a half rebounds. He's gone under six and a half rebounds, by the way. I know it's because of playing time Mm -hmm. in 39 of 41 games played this season. (laughs) So I'll go. with Uh, Yeah, again, for this Rockets team, especially when I was Shane off the floor, it's been rebounding by committee. Uh, I know Amen Thompson has done a pretty solid job of rebounding, but even Jalen Green has gotten in on the rebounding. you would have expected, and I expected Jabari Smith to be getting those rebounds, but it just hasn't really panned out, especially that he's, you know, getting that start at center uh, for the Rockets. But, I mean, he hasn't well, and, had... And Amon starting, and Amon's a great rebounder for him. Yeah, goal, so. and for Jabari, he's only had one double-digit rebounding game in the month of March, which was against the Sacramento Kings back on March 10th. But, again, since the injury... Um, to Shangun in the two games, five rebounds against the Wizards, seven against the um, against the Cavs. So I would probably look at Jalen Green points in this game. You know, without obviously Shangun in the lineup, that's a lot of offense that opens up. And Jalen Green has thrived in that situation and taken advantage of it. Um, it's pretty much going to be, and especially with without Cam Whitmore as well, right? Because he's been solid coming off the bench for the Rockets, but. He's had 37 to 26 over the last two games. Has Jalen Green without Shangun in the lineup? He had uh, 37 against his Wizards team. So I think he's going to be uh, a matchup nightmare for this Wizards team tonight. So I expect him to continue getting the volume as well uh, for this Rockets team. So over 25 and a half, I like the uh, Jalen Green points uh, prop in this game. You have anything else for this game? Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm really tempted by because. 
I don't know who's going to actually play for Washington. I guess based on amount of playing time, I have to consider something with Kispert. Maybe threes, but the volume should be there. They don't really have anybody off the bench, or they don't have anybody to actually take away minutes. How many guys does Washington actually have? They might be so using who's a Champagny in the starting lineup. Like they're kind of scrambling to fill a roster at this point. Yeah, so it's the projected lineup right now. It's Jordan Poole, it's Champagny, it's Corey Kispert, and then if Kuzma goes tonight, but he's questionable, and then it's Rashawn Holmes. And then God knows what's coming off of the bench for them. Let me see if I can, I mean, find anything here. I mean, names. So I like Champagne rebounds for Washington. Patrick He's had Baldwin. Seven rebounds in two straight games. Yeah. Patrick Baldwin Jr., who was part of that Jordan Poole trade, Anthony Gill, Jules Bernard, Johnny Davis, Jared Butler. I mean, those are the guys that are be coming off of the bench for this Wizards team. So, I mean, Definitely there are better games on the board, Scott. We'll say that much. <laughs> Anything else for this yeah. game? No. Uh, once again, Wizards win total under uh, for their current number. I feel like that's pretty good. All right. All right. Before we get over um, to the next game on the five-game schedule here tonight in the association, uh, let me tell everyone quickly about game time. Uh, game time gives you the opportunity to take that stress away from that ticket-buying experience because. That's why game time is there. They'll take that stress away. They're the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports and music and comedy and theater near you. They have killer last minute, uh, killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price is guaranteed. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you're going to have. Um, they have great flash deals and last minute tickets available. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. They have images of seat views, their lowest price guarantee, and also event cancel cancellation protection as well. So forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event, and you can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and much more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. Get this. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Um, and some of the things, the best thing I love about their app is that you can actually get images of your seat before you actually buy the ticket so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of second, two taps, and you're all set to go. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through the email. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code uh, CFBX for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CFBX for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Lowest price guarantee. Lowest price guaranteed. And we're also brought to you by Champs. Hey, March Band is kicking off in a few days here, and Champs is hosting a free free March Madness bracket contest for a chance to win $1,000. Plus, if you host your own March Madness pool on Champs, you'll get an extra entry for free into the bracket contest. Tiebreakers are determined by who enters first, so make sure you register now so you don't miss out. Head to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. Last but not least, we're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea into Hall of Fame Bets' revolutionary parlay optimizer tools to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. All right, Scott, let's get into the next game on the schedule here. We've got the um, Charlotte Hornets. They are in Florida to take on the Orlando Magic. Currently, as it stands, the Magic are a 12.5-point favorite with a total of 203.5. Looking at the injury report for both of these teams, start here with the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, the usual suspects are out for this game, LaMelo Ball, Seth Curry, Cody Martin, uh, Bryce McGowans, and Mark Williams. Trey Mann is questionable for this game for the Charlotte Hornets. For the Orlando Magic, pretty clean injury report. Only guys that are on there are guys that are on G League deals. Or that everybody is a go. Um, 
for this Orlando Magic team. They are uh, currently sitting in the five spot, uh, one game behind the Knicks for the fourth spot. They are two games ahead right now of the Sixers, so they kind of want to maintain staying in that fifth spot right now and having to avoid playing in that uh, play-in tournament bracket in the Eastern Conference. I mean, we know the story for the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, the season's pretty much wrapped up. Uh, your guys right now are Brandon Miller. It's Miles Bridges. And that's pretty much your offense right now. So 12 and a half right now is the number here, Scott, for the Orlando Magic. You laying it or are you taking the, the Charlotte Hornets here? I think I have to lean to Orlando just because of this team is really good at home. Uh, the, the Hornets are a team that made me money immediately, uh, but the uh, right after the, you know the trades that they made, et cetera, but they can't score. Like they're not going to yeah. reach a hundred most of the time, so I can't pick them. And I think Orlando's defense is really, really good. So you're looking at a really bad matchup, in my opinion, for Charlotte because Orlando is fully healthy. And we know Charlotte cannot score because Lamelo's out and the offense is terrible. So I can't pick Charlotte. I think my favorite play in this game is probably going to be the under or the Hornets team total under mm -hmm. because if they ended up with 88 points, would you be shocked? Probably not. But they can't score. Yeah. I mean, going through the actual games for Orlando, they scored 98 against Philly, and we know Philly's been underwhelming since Embiid got injured. They scored 96 against Phoenix, and not a very good defensive team. 110 against Memphis, okay. Scored 97 against the Pistons. You get my point. They've recently mm -hmm. not faced off against great defenses, and they've been really bad. Now you're against an elite defense that's healthy. Good luck to you. Uh, I'm going to lean to Orlando. I'm going to lean to the under. Charlotte team total under. I think Charlotte might not reach 90 in this game. So give me the under. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple here. That if you like magic, you, you just want to lay the points because – if they're going to win the game, they're more than likely going to cover the game because they are 23 and eight um, straight up and 22 and nine against the spread uh, in the span at home. And take it a step further when they are home favorites, 16 and two straight up and 15 and three against the spread. Both of those or at least the spread. They're at 80, 83.3%. Um, and now again, like you mentioned, defensively, they've done an absolutely fantastic job at home in, the, in that role as a home favorite. They're holding opponents to 103 points per game uh, this season. And like you mentioned, the struggles that the Charlotte Hornets are having um, offensively that even if, let's just say, Brandon Miller has an off night or Miles Bridges has an off night, like who's stepping up and scoring points for you? Because, again, they're very, very compromised right now, um, you know, when it comes to scoring the basketball. So, um, I mean, you have the more healthier team. Uh, a team with motivation, uh, a team that's been dominant at home. Um, I mean, I mean, you wouldn't be afraid to lay this big number here. So, again, it's a little bit chalky here that we're going, uh, at least for the first two games here, Scott. But I think if Magic is, is the right side for me as well in this game. Uh, maybe if you look at Magic first half, uh, they just come out of the gate looking really good, uh, and then maybe coast in the second half. I think I don't hate that angle either. Uh, I mentioned the under. I'm there with you. I, mean, I can see this game being 105 to, like, 90, 90. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. something in that range uh for this game so i'm with you on the under um player props anything you're looking at well if i am gonna like the under don't i kind of have to be tempted by trey man uh for under his assists because it's that four and a half he started off really solid with assists when he first came over to charlotte that's kind of cooled off a bit and orlando is number one in the league at preventing assists but looking at man's last couple of games i mean I can understand why the line might seem a bit, I'd say, scary because he had six against Philly and he had seven against Phoenix. But once again, Orlando being such a good defensive team and being good at preventing assists, and we think Charlotte might not reach 90 in this game, I have to at least consider taking the under for assists for man. I see Brandon Miller rebounds as kind of appealing, though, on the over. It is three and a half. I see minus 135. But going through the last couple of games for Miller, he has had at least uh, four rebounds in 15 of his last 20 games, and he's had at least four rebounds in seven of his last nine. So I do think based on the rock fight that we're expecting potentially in this game, Brandon Miller, maybe he gets benched if Orlando kills him. That's kind of the concern. But still, I think that this rebounding total feels a bit low. I'll go with the over on Brandon Miller rebounds. Yeah, I think that this is a game you probably won't get a rebounding prop, so whether it is on the Charlotte side or whether it's on um, 
the Orlando Magic side. Um, Nick Richards has done actually a pretty good job of rebounding the basketball as well. For the uh, Charlotte Hornets, kind of quickly going through his numbers, he's averaging 11 rebounds over the last five games. Uh, he's been in double-digit rebounds in four out of the last five games. Uh, 11 rebounds, 15 rebounds, five against Memphis, and then he had 13 against Detroit, and then 11 against the Brooklyn Nets. So he's at least good for around 30 minutes per game for the Charlotte Hornets uh, is Nick Richards. So that number right now is currently sitting at, um, let's see here, eight and a half for his rebounds in this game. Um, it's really hard to gauge on who's going to be the rebounder for this Orlando Magic team because they have a lot of front court depth. Uh, you know, we've talked about the Paulo Pancaros of the world, Wendell, uh, Wendell Carter Jr., even Patazzi that comes off of the bench for them. There's also a pretty good rebound. And then Franz Wagner, I mean, he can have a good rebounding night as well. So this is a one team that I do struggle with on who's going to actually rebound the basketball. Um, other than that, don't have much else for this game. Do you have anything else you want to mention for this game? Uh, I see somebody mentioning Mitchich uh, for his under. I do want to point out Trey Mann is a game time decision which also might be why I'm leaning to the under because we've yeah. seen a couple of spots recently where players play and then you see the underdog report of, oh, he's headed to the locker room five minutes into the game. Okay, cool. So maybe Trey Mann does play and then ends up uh, sitting because of illness. We'll see what happens. But yeah, Mitchich, I don't mind. Uh, the argument, of course, being that Orlando is just a very good defensive team and Orlando is going to be able to force Mitchich into some difficult spots on the floor. I get it. He's been fine recently, uh, but I do think if you want to back a good defense against a point guard or how would you describe Mitch? Is he a point guard per se? Because he's kind of like a European hybrid. Yeah, I think you kind of fit him into that like hybrid role of a shooting guard or an, and a point guard. Um, facilitator maybe is the correct word instead of or initiator. I don't know. I, I, you could call him a combo guard if you want as well, but I mean, like, yeah, like you mentioned, right? Again, he's going to be, if Trey Mann's not going to be able to go here tonight, he's going to be getting a lot of the minutes. And he's been playing right around 32 minutes for this game. Uh, sorry, for this um, Hornets team. Again, because of all the injuries that we did mention. So, again, if Trey Mann's not able to go, possibly does get even more minutes here tonight uh, for the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah, but I see uh, somebody mentioning, it was Reggie, who mentioned the PA under 19 and a half. Uh, he has gone over in two of the last three, but it's because he went nuts scoring-wise. He had 21-plus points in two of the last three games. Mm -hmm. I don't see him doing that against Orlando in this game. So if Mitchich is held to, let's say, 15 points or 14 points, I'm not sure he gets six assists. So yeah. if you think Orlando keeps him in check to some degree, then I agree. I don't mind the under for Mitchich PA. Yeah, he's played in two games this season against the Magic. Seven points, two rebounds, one assist, and then he did have 21 points, five rebounds, and four assists uh, back on March 5th in Charlotte. Um, and again, that was a game where that was a score of 101-89 in that game. And I want to say he was actually in the starting lineup here um, for the Charlotte Hornets along with Trey Mann. So yeah, keep that in mind because that was a game where the Hornets only played eight guys. They had Grant Williams, David uh, Davis, Bertans, and Bryce McGowan, who's also out for this game, playing in that game. We played 18 minutes. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get over to the next game of the schedule here. Uh, let's go over to the game between the Pelicans and the Brooklyn Nets. Pelicans on the road here to take on the Brooklyn Nets. Currently, as it stands, the Pelicans are a seven and a half points um, road favorite here with a total of 215. Looking at the injury report, uh, let's start here with the New Orleans Pelicans. No Dyson Daniels. Um, let's see. That is pretty much it. Herb Jones is probable for this game, and Cody Zeller is available. For the Brooklyn Nets, pretty clean injury report. The usual guys are out, the Ben Simmons of the world. But other than that, everybody is a go in this game. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith is questionable for this game. Um, so keep that in mind. But other than that, healthy squad for the Brooklyn Nets. Pelicans laying seven and a half on the road here against the Nets here. Scott, against your team, what are you thinking? So the Nets were on a long road trip. Now they're back at home. They've been a lot better at home than on the road. They're 16 games under in general, but they're only two under at home. So that tells you how bad they are on the road. Uh, they got Wemby the last time out. 
who had a monster game, uh, went to overtime. Wemby had like, I forgot what the hell he had, 33, 15, 7, and 7. It was something stupid, like for Wemby. But still, uh, New Orleans has been good. Uh, of course, I do still think they're better at home than on the road. But record-wise, they are 21 and 13 on the road. So they're kind of the same, basically, mm-hmm. uh, when you actually look at the numbers. But I'm going to lean to New Orleans because I just think they have too much size for this team. Uh, they're relatively healthy. Herb Jones potentially not playing would be a big loss because he's easily their best defensive player, but he's probable for this game. So I'm assuming he's going to suit up. Yep. This team's just so much more talented than the Nets. That That's basically it. I don't think the Nets are a good basketball team. I don't think anybody thinks they're a good basketball team. So I'm going to lean to the Pelicans because I just think they have too much size, too much scoring depth, and they're a good defensive team. The phase of one time this season, it was in New Orleans, but they won by basically – was it 27 points? Like, I, I just think that New Orleans is much better than them. Give me New Orleans. And Go I again. also want to point out mm-hmm. that, sorry, okay. I've been wrong in the Pelicans for most of the year. <laughs> I did pick the Pelicans to cover against the Clippers, and they covered by a hook. So maybe I've turned a corner here. Who knows? But I'm going to lean to New Orleans minus the seven and a half. Yeah, I mean, they did match up back on January 2nd uh, in New Orleans. Pelicans won that game 112-85. Um, just want to make sure to see who played for the Nets in that game. I mean, Mikko Bridges was out there, Cam Johnson, Claxton, Dinwiddie, and DFS. Um, yeah, I think for this Pelicans team, again, we talk about situational spots and motivation at this juncture of the season. And again, Pelicans are in that number five spot in the Western Conference. And uh, you want to win as many games as you can to avoid being in that play in tournament bracket where. For the Brooklyn Nets, like you mentioned, I mean, can they get into the play-in tournament? They're four games back of Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta, we know they've been struggling now, but I just think that this, now that this Pelicans team is healthy, I think they're going to be a scary squad. Um, And like you mentioned, that Herb Jones is probable here tonight as well. I think the one bet that has really worked out this season has been the Pelicans first half. And I think that's where I'm going to look at it in this game, because again, I don't trust them for a full game. I've seen it again. I've mentioned this multiple times on the uh, uh, podcast this season that they will find a way to let you down uh, for the full game. So I'll just say with the first half here for the Pelicans um, on the season, they are, let's see here, the second best team. Uh, behind the Boston Celtics when it comes to the first half spread, 41, 24, and 2. Uh, on the road this season, the Pelicans are, continue to be the second best team, 21 and 13 ATS. Uh, and against the Boston Celtics, who again continue to be just one of the best teams against the spread in the first half. So uh, that number, I think, I believe should be at around four and a half uh, for the Pelicans in the first half. So I'll look at it that way. Total is at 215 here. Scott, any thoughts on the total? Uh, I'm going to, I guess I'm leaning under because I don't think the Nets can score, but I don't really have a strong opinion on it. You kind of blew my mind though. It didn't fully register with me that the Hawks are a playing team. It just did not <laughs> register with me how bad the bottom of the Eastern Conference is. It's like after like the top eight seed, it's like a significant drop off because Miami, I mean, they're respectable 37 and 31, right? And I know they've dealt with a lot of injuries, but then it's separated by two and a half games then that the Chicago Bulls are 34 and 35. Actually, three that, and a half. Yeah, three and a half. I'm sorry. Um, so the Bulls, and then it goes Atlanta, who's 30 and 38 in the 10th spot. And then it's the Brooklyn Nets, who are four games back uh, of the Atlanta Hawks to that 10th spot, who are 16 games under 500 in that 10th spot right now. Like I mentioned, belongs to the Atlanta Hawks, who are eight games uh, under 500. So, um, yeah, that just kind of tells you how bad the Eastern Conference is, at least the the bottom of the barrel. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I'm leaning under as well. I, I've been watching these games ever since that the league memo came out or, you know, they've told refs to kind of let these guys play and, you know, the physicality has been up a little bit more. I think that's something that's fitting for this Pelicans team. That plays hard-nosed defense, right? I mean, you got, like we mentioned, Herb Jones, Jose Alvarado coming off of the bench. Um, you have good rebounders on this team for the Pelicans here as well. So I'll lean towards the under in this game. Again, it could probably be something similar to what we saw when these two teams matched up back in January. 
Scott, player props in this game, what are you looking at? Uh, well, I'm tempted by Trey Murphy threes uh, just because he's been in great form recently, and I think that he's going to really take advantage of the Nets, I'd say, questionable defensive game plan because they're going to have to try to stop Giannis. I mean, not Giannis, sorry, Zion. And yeah. they're going to have to try to stop everyone trying to drive to the lane. There's going to be a lot of wide-open kickouts. Now, the problem is Trey Murphy's threes have already been boosted. They're at three and a half. It's at plus 130, though. But he's gone over in six of the last ten. He's had at least four three-pointers in each of the last two games. And I have to at least acknowledge that he's just a really good player. Like, I, I'm trying to think if there's any reason for me not to take Trey Murphy, and I, I can't find one. So, I'll into the over on him. I Are any are you interested in any Nets three-pointer guys? Because I know that, that uh, New Orleans has not been a good three-point defense this season, but mm -hmm. the Nets don't have any great shooters. So, that's kind of why it's tricky. Yeah, is I mean, if there is, it's probably going to be, what, Cam Johnson, if he is playing here tonight um, for the... Uh, for the Nets, maybe Mikael Bridges. Cam Thomas is like hit or miss. Like it's the game where he could come out and look like he can go out and score forty points on a given night, and there's nights where he goes like three of eighteen and he's not able to get it done. Um, probably Mikael Bridges would be the pivot to me if you're looking at a three point uh, shooter for the uh, Brooklyn Nets in this game. Um. I mean, we know that he's going to get the shots up. The volume is going to be there from three-point line. He's averaging 6.4 attempts uh, over the last five games, shooting at around 43.8% in the in that span. So uh, if you want to look at it that way for the uh, for the Brooklyn Nets. And defensively, they haven't been very good either. So um, I don't know if it's like they don't have rim protection or whatever the case might be, but I think this might be um, a game where the Pelicans have a lot of success inside the paint uh, in this game against the, uh, against the Brooklyn Nets. So that would be something curious to see. At the end of the night, at how many points that the Pelicans did have inside the paint against the Brooklyn Nets? Um, Zion has been playing really well. Uh, I was kind of shocked to see that he's actually played in played in fifty six of the sixty seven games uh, thus far this season for the Pelicans. So good for good for Zion. Um, but he's been playing real good uh, over the last five games, he's averaging around thirty five minutes per game. Uh, he's averaging twenty eight points per game, twenty eight point six points in fact over the last five games. Um, so if you want to look at Zion points here tonight, and again, the shot volume is there for him as well, uh, for Zion. So his number for his points prop is, let me see here. Um, 24 and a half, but up to you. Uh, I mean, up to y'all if you want, if you take that, but I do think that he's been playing, playing really good basketball for, uh, the Pelicans. Do you have anything else for, as far as player props or anything else for this game? Uh, not really. Thought about Finney Smith under one and a half threes. Another guy is questionable, so he's clearly battling some injury. He's had zero threes in two of the last three games. Uh, even in that Spurs game that went to overtime, only attempted three threes, went under because he hit zero. So Finney Smith's attempted a less than four threes in back-to-back -back games, and his line's a one and a half. Not much room for error there, uh, there and he's injured. So mm -hmm. he might not play. Maybe he gets voided. Maybe he plays and leaves midway through the game. But Finney Smith under one and a half threes at like minus 110. I think it's kind of appealing. Um, are we tempted by Valanchunas unders? Because his minutes have significantly dropped off. He hasn't played more than 20 minutes since March 8th. And he hasn't scored more than six points since that game in March 8th against the Philadelphia 76ers. So last five games, he's averaging, or he scored four, four, five, four, and six. So I'm not going to bother with Valanchunas because historically he owns the Nets. So yeah. I'm not going to bother. Uh, he might play because Claxton, we know, is too skinny to guard him. I'm not surprised they cut his minutes, though. We know Valanchunas mm. is practically useless defensively at this stage in his career. He was never yeah. a good defensive player, but... He can't guard pick and roll switches. So with that being the case, New Orleans decided to go elsewhere. Larry Nance has played more because he's more versatile defensively. And they've been good. They've been winning games. So I'm not going to take anything Valanchunas related. I would not mind like maybe a Nance Jr. rebounds prop in this game. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to take Valanchunas unders because historically he's been really, really good against the Nets. So I'm going to pass. All right. Anything else for this game? 
Oh, uh, no. As a Nets fan, I will not be watching. <laughs> All right, next game on the schedule, we got the Dallas Mavericks. They are headed to San Antonio to take on the Spurs in this game. Uh, the Mavericks are currently a nine-point favorite uh, in this game uh, with a total of 234 now is the updated number. Looking at the injury report for both of these teams, for the Dallas Mavericks, Luka Dantich and Dante Exum are both probable. Josh Green is going to be out for this game for the Mavericks, and that is pretty much it. For the San Antonio Spurs, uh, pretty clean injury report. All guys that are on there are guys that are on uh, two-way G League deals for the San Antonio Spurs. Um, Mavericks coming off of the... Kyrie Irving game winning left handed uh, incredible shot against the Dallas, uh, sorry, against the Denver Nuggets, which was on Sunday afternoon. Now they're traveling to take on the San Antonio Spurs. This is going to be the third matchup uh, this season between these two teams. The Mavericks have won both games uh, fairly comfortably and uh, covered both games 144 119 back on December 23rd. Then on Valentine's Day, 116.93 in favor of the Dallas Mavericks as well. The over-under has been split at 1-1, one one, um, but it seems like Dallas has gotten their way against the Spurs thus far this season. But now they match up here on um, Tuesday night in San Antonio. Nine is the number right now. Uh, Scott, what are you thinking about this game? I think I'm going to lean to San Antonio. It just feels like a massive spread. I mean, Dallas has dominated the last two games. Both those were at home, though. They faced off against the Spurs back in October, so I don't know if you could even use that piece of data, but they won by seven. Dallas had a very nice win against Denver uh, in a game that they choked away a pretty big lead late, and then they ended up getting it done at the end. Doesn't this feel a bit inflated? Dallas, we've, cr we've been critical of for the last couple of years of not being a good team ATS, and this year they've not been very good ATS, so I'm not going to pick Dallas to cover a decent number here. I think this line's inflated because they beat Denver at home. And with that being the case, I just don't fully trust them. Having said that, they haven't very good ATS on the road this season yeah. mm -hmm. uh, as they are 21 and 11. Uh, so most of their uh, spread issues have been at home for the most part. Yeah. Because at home, they are currently 17 and 19. So, mm -hmm. Wanted to at least mention that most of the spread issues are at home. On the road, they're actually good ATS, but I still am not sold on this Dallas team. I don't think most people are. It, it, the recent discourse surrounding this team is bothering me because they won one game. They beat Denver in a game they choked away a massive lead in, and they needed high-end talent, Aluka with the three-pointer, and Kyrie, whatever the hell that was, for the game winner. And now people are asking if they're threats to come at. No, they're not. They're not a good basketball team. Like they're not threats to do anything. And yet people think they are. I'm going to lean to the Spurs in this game, and I'm going to lean to the under. San Antonio defensively has actually been decent. I mean, you're looking at these games, and they've been in the middle of a long home, home overall stay, and they ended up beating Brooklyn in overtime. They lost to Denver by 11. Not exactly a home game, but that was in Texas. That was that neutral site game, quote-unquote. And that game was close for most of it. Uh, they were down a lot early, came back, and then they got kind of buried late in the fourth. Lost to Houston by two. They've been in good form. Uh, lost to Golden State by 10. I just don't trust Dallas enough to actually win by margin. I'm going to link to San Antonio. Yeah. Um... It just feels like to me like Dallas is like it, something similar to the Lakers where they just beat up on like lesser teams. And it's the fact that do I trust Greg Popovich to leave his guys out there for the full 48 minutes or is he going to pull them? And we've seen, I think this was last year where they were still, I mean, I know they were tanking for, or for when Binyama or at least, you know, being in that top three or whatever the, um, you know, having the top three worst record to be considered for that number one pick last season. It's just the fact, like we mentioned, that Dallas going on the road, they just beat up on lesser opponents. And I think that if this was the fourth game uh, between these two teams uh, and that the Mavericks were 3-0, and uh, I would probably look at San Antonio, maybe to at least avoid the, the sweep. But I just feel like there's just, the Dallas is a more complete team in their spots that the San Antonio Spurs just 
they kind of like when 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 Benyama goes off the floor, like this team becomes very, very stagnant. And I know you rely on Devin Vassell at that point and Kelvin Johnson, but I mean, at least Kelvin Johnson has been a little bit inconsistent for me. I know Devin Vassell can fill up the basket as well, but he's also a hot and cold shooter. Um I'll lean with the Mavericks, man. I, I don't love it. I think my more favorite play is on the total in this game. I think I I, I mean I do like the over in this game. I think that the Mavericks are a team that we know can put up the points led by Kyrie and Luka. And if they're knocking down their three-point shots like they have been in this uh, this season against the Spurs, uh, I think this can fly over the total. And I know defensively, Dallas has not been very good since the All-Star break. I know they've been a little bit better over the last five games, but that's still at that point where you have the Spurs team that that they have guys that can still, you know, fill the basketball uh, in the rim. And I think that Wimby's in line for a good game because even with Daniel Gafford, even with Derek Lively, who I think needs to significantly work on his hands this off season, because I was watching that Denver game, there was multiple passes that came from Luke and he just absolutely fumbled the ball away. And he also gets into foul trouble as well. And that's, I think that comes with a territory where we're near, near a rookie and you're trying to learn the NBA game, that's it's a little bit too fast for you. I think a lot of rookies have came out and said that. But I think I do like the, uh, the uh, over in this game. That it looks like that number starting to move towards 234.5 now. It was at 233.5 before we started recording here. So that 234 right now. So I'll look at the over in this game. That's more of my favorite play here, Scott. I think I'm going to lean over as well. I don't feel great about it, but I am going to lean to San Antonio. I just feel like after the Denver win, it's a pretty good sell high spot on this Mavericks team. All right. Um, player props, anything you're looking at? Uh, yeah. Wemby blocks at four and a half. I don't care how good you are. <laughs> give me the under. Like four and a half blocks is insane, especially against Dallas. It's one thing if you're against a team that is allowing a ton of shot blocks. So, for example, if you're against like Memphis or against Portland, Dallas is allowing the second fewest blocks per game in the entire league. Like, I, I don't know how I'm supposed yep. to take a Wemby over in blocks. We know that most of their shots are jump shots with Luka and Kyrie. So I have to go under for Wemby blocks. He's had less than four blocks in both meetings against Dallas that he's played in this season, albeit he played less than 28 minutes in both those games, and now his minutes count is at, like, 35, give or take. If Dallas blows him out and I'm wrong about the spread, then Wemby might sit the fourth quarter, as you said before, Pop mm -hmm. might rest some guys. Four and a half blocks of minus 148. Give me the under. Like, I, that's way too high. I know Wemby is a great shot blocker. He's an all-time great shot blocker. But the last couple games, he had seven against the Nets. So I'll point that out. Three games before that, he had three against Denver, two against Houston, and two against Golden State. So he's going under four in three of the last four, and his line's basically at five. I got to take the under. You're against an elite team offensively at preventing block shots, and your line's at four and a half. Give me Wemby under. That's a crazy block number. Yeah. Um, he, again, I think that number is inflated because he's coming off a game that has seven, seven. blocks against With the overtime Bro in there. Right. So. Yeah, against the Brooklyn Nets. But I think there's been more times than not where he's had a game. I mean, the number is, again, spot on, right? Because, again, they're probably just looking at it saying, hey, Wimby's averaging four and a half blocks for the month of March. That's going to be our number. But, again, like you mentioned, that Dallas is allowing, what, the second least amount of blocks to the opposition. And he hasn't done it in either meeting this season against the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, so I think that's a little bit telling. <clears throat> uh, so, again, four and a half, I think that's a good call on the under for his blocks here tonight. Um Worry about the blowout factor, but again, Luca has just had a lot of success against the Dallas Mavericks uh, in his career. I mean, his points probably is at thirty three and a half. Um, just want to kind of quickly see what he's done against the Spurs in his career, or at least at least in the two games this season. So he had a triple double back on December twenty third, thirty nine points, twelve rebounds, ten assists. Had a triple double last season as well. Oh, sorry. Um, so two of the three meetings this season, which October 25th. So this is the fourth meeting then already this season because they faced off three times. Wemby just did not play in one of them. Okay, so he's had a triple double in two of the three games this season against the San Antonio Spurs. So I misspoke earlier when I said this was a third matchup. This is actually the fourth matchup um, between these two teams. So 
Luca had a triple double in the first two meetings, fell a little bit short on uh, Valentine's Day because it did, I believe, turn into a blowout where he did have 27 points, nine rebounds, and eight assists. So, um, if it's at plus odds here, Scott, I think we got to get back on Luca's triple double here tonight. Um, Is that about 185? Give yeah, I, I think yeah, you got to you got to get back on that at plus 185 here for Luca. So. Luca triple double. If you don't want to get that fancy, maybe look at his rebounds and assists to go over uh, in this game. Um, other than that, nothing else really stood out to me as far as player props. You have anything else for this game? I already mentioned the Wemby under for blocks. I'm trying to think, if there's mm-hmm. anything else I'm really tempted by. I don't see much to be honest. It's one of those games that I'm not really that interested in from betting perspective. Just full disclosure. I know Gafford rebounds might be a bit inflated. Uh, he's had less than eight rebounds in eight of the last 10 games and has aligned at seven and a half. So if you want to consider maybe looking at recent form Gafford under and rebounds, but I'm probably not going to take that. Uh, is there anything else I'm tempted by? I don't really see much else. Uh, if you want to go for PJ Washington blocks, it's at a half. He's had at least one block in seven of the last 10, and he's had at least one block in a couple games in a row, I believe, against San Antonio. He's, uh, so the point is, I am an only to Washington over for blocks, but I don't see anything that's that strong for me in this. I, I feel like it's a game that I'm going to acknowledge, but not really bet. All right, let's get over to the last game of the night. We got the Denver Nuggets. They are in Minnesota to take on the Timberwolves. Uh, currently, as it stands, the Denver Nuggets are a seven and a half point uh, road favorite here with a total of 213 and a half. Looking at the injury report for both of these teams to start here with the Denver Nuggets. To claim the injury report, um, nobody of significance is on there. Only Zeke Naji is questionable with lower back pain. Minnesota, like we talked about, did play last night, so they do get that extra time to um, submit their injury report. Do expect Rudy Gobert to be out there. He's missed the last two games uh, for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He was, I think, I want to say the questionable or game-time decision uh last night against the utah jazz but ended up sitting last night so i don't know maybe they're saving him tonight uh against um nikola Jokic and the denver nuggets but seven and a half is a number right now for the denver nuggets against the minnesota timberwolves here scott what are you thinking so denver's been in great form uh even though they did lose that game to dallas on sunday but i am going to take the points it's a lot of points uh, for me at seven and a half. Uh, yeah, I want to quickly just make sure that's the actual line uh, at this point in time. Uh, yeah, I, I see seven and a half. So I'm going to lean to Minnesota. Uh, we know Denver this season has not been a great team ATS on the road. They've been better recently, but still, when you're 15, 19, and one ATS on the road, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a hard time laying about three possessions with you. Mm-hmm. I think Minnesota can hang in there. I'm not saying they're going to win the game, but I think Ant can be a matchup problem for Caldwell Pope, et cetera, assuming that the mess, the uh, finger is not too messed up and he's going to play in this game. Gobert coming back, I'm not saying he's going to stop uh, Jokic because nobody can, but I do think that he can make life difficult for him if Gobert does play. I'm going to lean to Minnesota, though. Seven and a half feels a bit disrespectful for two teams with – top three records in the Western Conference. Give me the home team plus seven and a half. Yeah, I, this number was, again, really inflated here. I had the same thoughts as you as wise. It was seven and a half. Um, this is the third time that the uh, Timberwolves are going to be a home underdog. Um, and they actually won both games outright as home underdogs this season. Uh, this was earlier this season against the um, Denver Nuggets, in fact, uh, where the Denver Nuggets in that game were a two point favorite. Um, and the Minnesota Tribbles won the game outright 110 89. And then they were a three and a half point um, home underdog against the Boston Celtics, won that game outright 114 109. I know that they had Carl Anthony Towns and they were a healthy squad and those games. But I think for Minnesota, again, like you mentioned, being in the standings of where they are, especially in this division. Where all three of these games or teams are separated by half a game, uh, OKC, Minnesota, and Denver. So when I see these type of games, I, again, you take a look at what the Minnesota Timberwolves have done within the division alone this season: eleven and two straight up within their own division. Denver six and five, so struggling a little bit 
within their division. I'm pretty sure those uh, victories for Denver have probably in the division have come against Utah and Portland uh, this season, those six victories, at least maybe half of those. I'll dig a little bit more deeper to see if I can find it. But um, I think this, again, this is too many points for a Minnesota Timberwolves team. So plus seven and a half for me. Total sitting at 213 and a half here, Scott. Any thoughts on the total? Uh, for this one, I feel like most people are going to take the under and just hope for a playoff type atmosphere. Even without Gobert in the lineup, I have to at least point out Memphis, uh, not Memphis, sorry, Minnesota has been really good defensively as they have allowed less than 105 points in three straight games. Then again, you play Utah in two of them. I'm not sure if that counts, but it's Utah on it's it's Utah and Utah. You know, they're a lot better at home than on the road, so I guess that counts for something. I'm going to lean under uh, in this game. I just think pace is not going to be a factor. First meeting did a land uh, below 200. First meeting landed 199. It was months ago, but still. I'm going to lean under. Give me a physical game, an ugly game. That's what Minnesota wants to play. But with the way yeah. the game's being officiated for the last couple weeks and with the intensity we should be getting between these teams in a playoff-type atmosphere, I got to lean under. I see a war, and I think that Memphis – I think I did it again. I think Minnesota's going to hang in there, but I think it's going to be a lower-scoring game. So I'll lean to the under. Uh, going back to what I mentioned about the division uh, for the Denver Nuggets being 6-5 and five straight up, three of their victories have come against Portland, two have come against the Jazz, and one have come against the Thunder. Their five losses – Two, uh, sorry, three against the Thunder, and um, one has come against the Minnesota Timberwolves here. So, um, I mean, these at least the better two teams are getting up in these spots against the Denver Nuggets. So, a pivotal game here tonight for the um, for the Denver Nuggets. Uh, sorry, and Denver Nuggets and Minnesota, frankly. So, yeah, I'm with you on the under. I think that if Minnesota is going to win this game outright, it's going to have to be that lower scoring rock fight type of game. Um, you know, something we see in the lower lower hundreds, like a 105, 102, something in that range, that it does get below this total uh, in this game here. So I'm on the under for this game here as well. Any player props you're looking at here, Scott? Uh, for player props, I got to mention rebounds. Uh, but the question is, do I think Gobert's going to play? You know that I can't take a rebounding prop on Gobert's rule. So absolutely not. I got to pivot uh, if Gobert is not going to play. If he doesn't play, I don't mind Nas Reed, uh, but for the most part, I'm wondering how Minnesota is going to actually defend uh, Jokic because they're probably going to let Gobert try to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. Would that limit the assists? Like, I don't see them double-teaming Joker. Do you, see how well, how do you think they're going to try to guard him? I don't think they would try to double-team him when you have Rudy Gobert trying to defend him. Um and just kind of looking at Nicole Jokic versus Rudy Gobert, at least against when he, when Rudy Gobert came over to the Minnesota Timberwolves, I'll, I'll quickly read this off. Uh, three games against Rudy Gobert, 24, 7, and 9, 20, 12, and 16, and then 25, 10, and 3. So one game where he did have a triple double, the other two games where we're not used to seeing Nicole Jokic put up Nicole Jokic type of numbers. Um, Dare I say, look at the points and uh, look at the rebounds and assists to go under here tonight, maybe. But I think that Rudy Gobert does a, a pretty good job uh, of uh, trying to defend Nikola Jokic because those numbers don't pop off of the page for Nikola Jokic as they do against some of the other teams where he has an easier time with. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of on the same page here. I thought about maybe pivoting to a Jamal Murray. I, I do like Ant over in this game if he does end up playing. I'm not sure how messed up the finger is, but I do think athletically he's going to be a problem for the uh, Nuggets to deal with, so that's a bit of a concern there. I am going to point out that Joker has attempted at least 20 shots in two of the last three regular season meetings against Gobert. So if the argument is the volume is going to be there for Gobert shots-wise, I mean, for uh, Joker, uh, shots-wise, that doesn't mean that the assist might not be there. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. But I think it's mostly just relying on Ant to keep um, Minnesota in striking distance, maybe Reed either coming off the bench or starting. That's probably the two I'm going to lean towards. Um, Yeah, I really, I mean, it's Ant. I mean, and defensive stats in this game might be something to look at because, again, like we mentioned at the top of the show, he's a guy that puts effort on both sides of the basketball. Um, if you want to look at his steals and blocks combined or just his steals alone, I think that 
I think that again, defensively, Minnesota will come out and play in this game. And his number right now for his steals and blocks are at two and a half at plus one twenty. And he's been able to get half. Yeah, if you just want the block. Uh, Let me see what he's been able to do. So he's had at least two blocks in three out of the last four games uh, overall, and he's gone uh, over this projection of two and a half combined steals and blocks in three of the last four games as well. Uh, In particular, against the Denver Nuggets uh, this season, he has, let's see, um, against Denver. So he's only played in one game this season against Denver, which was back on November 1st. And he had he had two steals in that game as well. So um I, again, I, I think that if you want to just look at steals and blocks at that plus price, or if you just want to go steals, I don't hate that for Anthony Edwards here tonight. But other than that, I think this is gonna be a game that I just want to kind of sit back and watch this for from a, from a player props perspective as well. But definitely will be on Minnesota here tonight for sure. Anything else for this game here, Scott? No, I think we basically covered it. All right, so that was the last game of the night. Uh, let's get over to our lock and dog for the show, and then we will put together our underdog fantasy entry here as well. Scott, you want to lead us off? Sure. Um, just to ask, what's usually our cutoff uh, for minus prices uh, for the lock on the show? Uh, I would say like minus 150, minus 160 in that range. All right. Uh, yeah, I think I might have to do it. I really, really want to take Wemby under four and a half blocks, which might age horribly, <laughs> but I think I have to. I think I have to take it. Uh, I'm gonna go with the under at four and a half blocks for Wemby. I found minus 148. That's why I'm asking. Okay. But I just think that line's too high. Dallas is once again allowing the second fewest blocks per game in the entire league. Wemby's never had more than three against the Mavericks this season, and his line's at four and a half. It's a big spread, too, so I have to at least point out the possibility of a blowout where I'm wrong about the actual lean for San Antonio. Pop says, well, you know, why bother, and Wemby doesn't play the fourth. But simply put, four and a half blocks against a team that's allowing the second fewest in the league is just too high. And a big reason for that is because Dallas has a lot of isolation options with Luka and with Kyrie. My question for you is, if you're the Mavericks, why would you want Wemby to switch on to Luka or Kyrie? I don't have an answer for that. I don't think you would want to because those two guys would absolutely just blow past him. And if he switches on Luka, you know Luka's going to do everything in his power to Get, get a foul and get him in foul trouble and get him off of the court. That's kind of my point, though, is that I think Wemby, if uh, Dallas goes after him, are going to probably try to use their, I can't even say quickness, but you get my point. They're going to try yeah. to drag Wemby away from the basket. Or you can look at them not switching on Wemby and you get a bunch of fadeaways by Luka and Kyrie. So I just think matchup-wise, it's a good sell-high spot for Wemby blocks. He had seven against the Nets because the Nets can't really shoot and they attack the rim. Dallas does attack the rim kind of with Luka, but it's mostly isolation stuff. And I could see Wemby being in a help roaming situation uh, or a role with this matchup. And I do think that Dallas will try to go out of their way to not challenge Wemby at the rim. So for me, I'm going to go with Wemby under four and a half blocks as my lock. It's a ton of blocks. Like I get it. Less than five in a game at minus 148. You don't get this line that often. So I'll try to capitalize on, uh, capitalize on it. So give me Wemby uh, under the blocks there. For the dog, I thought about going for an alt line. I really didn't like any dogs on the card today. Mm. Uh, I, I leaned to San Antonio plus the points, but I picked New Orleans. I picked Houston, and I ended up picking uh, Orlando. I think for this one... I'm curious if I want to go alt spread or if I want to go with a potential parlay. But I think for this one, I think I am going to go alt spread. I just want to quickly pull up what I can find. I think I'm going to go with the Rockets in this one because I'm skeptical on if Kuzma's going to play. They're missing half their team. Kulabala got injured. Avdi is not playing. The Wizards are an abysmal basketball team anyway. And Houston did just beat them by double digits. So... Mm-hmm. I think for this one, I am going to go with the Rockets, but I got to pick the right number or if I want to go with a player performance double. 
I'm not gonna. I'm just not gonna find much value uh, for that. So, oh uh, yeah, looking at the actual spread here, I'm gonna take Houston minus the. Sorry, just quickly trying to find the right number for me. Yeah, I'll take Houston minus twelve and a half at plus one thirty six. All right. Um. Yeah, my lock is gonna come in the same game here as well. Uh, we talked about how bad defensively the Wizards have been. Um, I mean, teams are just walking into 120 plus points here tonight. So, Rockets team total is sitting at 119 and a half. I'll take that. They just put up 135. That was with Bilal Kulabali. That was with. Um, Denny Avdia, that was with three other five starters that are not going to be playing here tonight. Now you're expecting guys that are coming out for the end of the bench uh, to try to slow down this Rockets team, even without Shane Goon, right? I mean, these guys have stepped up. So defensively, it's just more me fading the Washington Wizards defense here. I'm going to go with the Rockets team total over 119 and a half. Uh, for my dog, um, Luke, a triple double. It was going to be either Luka triple-double at plus 185 or I was just going to take Minnesota outright at plus 235. Um, and I don't want to be a coward and take it all spread like down to plus four and a half for um, the Minnesota Timberwolves because plus four and a half is around plus 135, which I am kind of tempted by. But yeah, let's just go Luka triple-double um, plus 185. Like we mentioned, he's done it in two of the games already this season against the Dallas Mavericks. I know... The last game, it was Kyrie and the Kyrie show, but I think that this is just a matchup nightmare for the San Antonio Spurs trying to slow down Luka. So I'll take Luka triple-double plus 185 right now as my dog of the day here. So uh, Rockets team total over 119.5 as my lock, and then Luka triple-double as my dog plus 185. And Scott, uh, your lock is going to be... I got Wemby uh, under 4.5 blocks of minus 148, and my dog is the Rockets minus 12 and a half at plus 136. All right. Uh, last order of business here. Let's put together our underdog fantasy entry here for tonight. Uh, again, if you haven't already signed up using our promo code NBA SGPN, go ahead and do so. Um, and you can get your first deposit doubled up to uh, $100. Over new account users using that promo code NBA SGPN. Um, for the guys in the chat, man, drop your yeah, Casey dropping his lock in there as well, and his dog, uh, drop your lock and dogs in there as well. If you're in the chat with us, uh, I want to hear what you guys have on there as well as we put together our underdog fantasy entry here for tonight. All right, so let's start with you want to just throw Wimby under blocks in there and see if it's available. If it's at four and a half, then I want yeah, it. If it's at see. four, probably not. Um, yeah, it's at four, so we'll we'll pass on that. Um, who did we like tonight? Uh, let's see, Luca. I guess we can throw in there his triple, triple doubles. Double at, should be spicy. So yeah, it's spicy, but it's one point five. So we're getting chipped about thirty five cents. I, I I'm I mean I'm still fine with it. It's still spicy. Do you, do you want to just go with the RA instead? Yeah, we could do that. Uh, RA is at yeah nineteen and a half. So we'll go with that. All right. So first. Entry will be Luca rebounds and assist higher 19 and a half. What else do we like? Um, do you want to fade anybody on Charlotte because we think they're not going to score? Do you want to go with mm. the do you want to go with Orlando? Um, I'm trying to think of what else there is. Um, let me see here. I mean, I mentioned uh, Finney Smith lower one and a half threes, but I'm not sure if he's actually going to be playing in this game at all. Yeah, uh, I mean, they do have his number up at one and a half. I'll take the lower on that. I mean, okay. if it gets voided, then it gets voided. It's fine. Yeah, they'll just drop to a, a two-pick entry uh, for us. So, yeah, we'll throw him in there. So, Dorian Finney-Smith, lower than one and a half three-pointers made. And then we'll throw in one more here. Let's see. Did you Anything want in the... like steals and blocks or something? Yeah, let's see. Edwards... His steals and blocks. It's spicy at two and a half at 1.1. 1. 1. That's we'll not even that, that spicy. Yeah. I mean, it's just like uh, steals are at one and a half. Blocks is at half. Um, Do we have anything in the Rockets and Wizards game? You want to go like Jalen Green points? 
I mean, I mentioned Landell lower than for rebounds, but I highly oh, yeah. doubt underdog is going to have a lineup on a backup center. How so yeah, if you, you want to go so Jalen Green, do have it. they do have uh, it. Okay. That, yeah. That's surprising. So, uh, but the thing is, it's a spicy, it's at 1.2 higher. So they, they're onto it, but they have rebounds and assists at eight. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't mind that per se. They do have the do lower, but go... it's 0.85. No, I know. Do you want to just go yeah. Jalen Green? Or yeah. Go, I... Like common with something. Uh, let's see what they have for. So they have Thompson, nine and a half rebounds. They have rebounds and assists at 12 and a half. Uh, steals is at 1.5 at higher 1.2. I think I'm comfortable with his like rebounds and assist uh, to go higher. Sure. Um, because I think he can walk into eight rebounds and he also is going to be out there playing the minutes as well. I know he didn't have any assist in that game against the Cavs, but he did have That's kind of the rebounds. problem. I'm, I'm yeah. wondering if we're just better off taking the rebounds. Yeah, let's just do rebounds and I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, so his number is Thompson. Where is he? Nine and a half. So we'll go higher on that. He could get into double digits here. Sure. All right. So there we go. Our underdog fantasy entry for tonight. Luca is going to be higher. 19 and a half rebounds and assists. Dorian Finney Smith, lower than one and a half three pointers made. And then Amon Thompson, higher nine and a half rebounds. That uh, $10 entry will get you a return of $60 uh, in your pocket. Again, if you haven't already signed up, make sure you use that promo code NBA SGPN. Uh, if you have already signed up, get your family members involved, coworkers, anybody in the legal age and in a legal state where fantasy, uh, sorry, underdog fantasy operates uh, and go ahead and help us out uh, by using our promo code NBA SGPN. We want to win this. We want to win this month against the other shows on the network. So again, NBA SGPN. All right. That is going to wrap it up, my friends, for this edition of the NBA gambling podcast. Uh, Scott, anything else you want to mention before we get out of here? Uh, no, a reminder, you got NCAA tournament action, first four games. You also have the NIT, which is starting tonight. So a lot of college basketball to follow, too, if you're not sold in the NBA tonight. Yeah, um, NIT, or sorry, NIT, yeah, NIT, and then we have the first four in the first two games tonight starting as well. Five games, a little light action uh, in the association, at least. And then I think just a calm before the storm, uh, before the uh, NCAA tournament uh, does tip off here officially on Thursday. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at the usual time with the Terrell and Scott. So look out for us then. Um, again, head over to the merch store. Use that code MADNESS, 15% off of everything in the merch store. And also, uh, we're still running our um, 700 uh, episode giveaway. Uh, so just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash 700. All you have to do is either be subscribed uh, to the NBA Gambling Podcast YouTube channel or just leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You just have to do a screenshot, submit it. We'll pick seven lucky winners. We'll get a gift card to the merch store. So we'll wrap that up on Thursday. So uh, get in there. I did see a couple come across. So there's only, I think, two or three signed up. So they may just get all seven. Get yourselves in there. Uh, seven lucky winners will get that uh, gift card to the merch store. Uh, make sure you follow Scott on uh, X. That's at Rice Show Radio. You can follow me there at, uh, at SportsNerd824. Till then, good luck with your bets. Let's break these books off and let it ride.